3-0 and you're through the Swiss stage. But of course, this tournament's slightly different. We've got seven rounds of Swiss. It's four is the magic number instead of three. So it's both three losses and three wins at the moment. And it just changes everything up. A lot of players, three games they're through and maybe their mentality is going to be used to that. Are they going to be able to get that fourth win? On the other side, on the flip side, for these two players that we're going to be watching up next, they have that last chance. Usually they'd be out of a tournament at this point. So that is a positive that they can focus on and say, hey, look, let's forget about these last three games. Let's focus up, let's clutch up and start to get some wins on the board. And of course, like the Richard was saying on the on the sofas just a moment ago, you don't want to go home with a 0-4 and four record. That's the one thing coming into a, a competition as prestigious as the E-Champions League, that you don't want to have your first memory being at least get a win on the board here, at least give you something, uh, self something to take home. Even if you lose your next game and you end up at one and four, at least you've got that win on the board. Shows you can compete at this level because when you find yourself in this situation, Dan, where you haven't won a game here at this tournament, you have to start asking those questions yourself. It's like, am I good enough to be here right now? Am I struggling against these players? Or is it just a case of, I just need that spark to get me going in the tournament? Once that comes, I'm going to remind everyone just how good I am. And, and we speak about mentality and how they're going to progress from those situations. Are they players who are looking back at the replays, who are watching what went wrong, or are they just simply taking it on the chin and saying, look, I know I can play better. I don't need to watch those games. I just need to focus on what got me here to this tournament, how I actually qualified to this point. And if they can find that same form, because you had to beat a lot of players to get to this tournament here today. It's not like they were just invited. It wasn't an easy process for them. They beat a lot of good FIFA players, and they just need to find the same form that they found in those previous qualifiers. And of course, we just saw a beautiful shot of the trophy that all of these players here in Manchester are playing for the first ever E Champions League. And this is the first time that we're going to see some players eliminated from the tournament. Tournament lights on the line for these two that you can see on your stage. You can see the game is ready to get going as well, Dan. I'm going to be interested as well to see what the tactical lineup is for these players, what players have got to play in certain positions. Because we've seen probably this tournament more than some of the previous ones as well. Some real Player selection issues for players. Where do they play certain players? Do they have Hullet at left back? Are they playing Modric in the middle? Who are they using up top? Eusebio, R9, Cristiano Ronaldo. So many questions which uh, makes it so much more interesting for me when I see those first team lineups come up on the screen. Uh, most players at this point should know what kind of foot items they want to be using, but it's a real question of are they going to be confident in their ability? And the fact that they're 0 and 3 is now the time they change things up and say, look, I'm not happy with playing Yasebi. I'm not happy with playing Pele. Instead, I'm going to stick with maybe Luka, Luka Modric. We saw the impact Luka Modric has had in so many games so far. So potentially, this could be the real turning point for these two players, Mark. Well, we are underway then. If you're just joining us, of course, this is an elimination game from the Swiss groups here. All to play for for these two players. And the fear of the 0-4 and four record looming over their shoulder but also the chance to keep their dream alive here of moving towards Madrid. And that once in a lifetime opportunity, Neymar coming forward now. Ronaldo tries to get around the corner, but good interception there from Cancelo. And now you are gonna see that ball spread out wide here to Marcelo. And I like starting a game by spreading the width, trying to seek your opponent and see if they are gonna be able to challenge you on the wing, but this might be an early chance for Cristiano Ronaldo here. Decent bit of play, but Gonna just strike the bar very close. Not quite timed right by Eusebio there. Just hitting it yellow. You already can see some potential changes coming in here. Lala being moved to right backs. Looked like he was uh, maybe a little mistake there. Interesting to see Lala back in that right back position as well. That headliner's foot item, Dan. We haven't seen him in there for a while. Maybe uh, one of those foot items that one of the players is completely comfortable using at home in their team and just likes the way that he plays. I've been a big fan of Lala at fullback. He's not quite got the height as some of the other fullbacks that we're seeing or some of the other centre-backs that we're seeing put into fullback position, but it's his aggressiveness that I enjoy in the pitch. Very similar to Marcelo. Uh, he Thank gets you, up, he joins the attack, but he's also pressuring, and he will win that ball quite high up on the pitch. So that's why I quite like Lala at right back, but we'll see if that has any implications onto this particular game, or maybe it could be a, a bad one. Maybe it could be a good one. Who knows? Lala might be able to get a whip across in and then suddenly we might see something spectacular from who he's crossing into. But for both of these players, I'm sure, I'm sure they're both very nervous, Mark. I would be at 0-3. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you. 100%. You can see at the moment both players kind of like jiggling about a little bit. The nervous energy starting to come to the fore. And obviously on one of the, uh, the main stages that we have here, one of the main stations under the bright lights away from the kind of pit area that you're seeing a lot of the other players playing in at the moment. So not just a, a change of circumstance here with the fact that their tournament life is on the line, also a change of scenery as well. So even more uncomfortable for these two. And it's going to be whether they 
want to make their mark on history. We talk about how this inaugural tournament is going to be so important to those players who get into the last eight, who get to go to that Champions League. But you've also got to look at the fact that you are a part of history right now anyway. <laughs> and if you go out as zero and four, you're going to be a negative part of that history. But if you can get two wins, three wins, if you can at least get close to getting out of Swiss, then people are going to look at you and say, look, hey, this is a player that we have to respect at future tournaments. Oh, for sure. It's definitely uh, laying a market down for future tournaments, like you say. But the one thing we talk about the future, Dan, there's only one of these. There's only one E-Champions League. And you're going to have to wait a full 12 months to have another shot. Uh, making it through to that last date, to that finals in Madrid. And you can see at the moment, just a little bit of a pause in the gameplay. So I think we should take this opportunity because obviously we're looking at one end of the table. Let's talk about some of the players that are at the other end. And, you know, we should talk about Tex. We should talk yeah, about Dasari because we have also seen those two players particularly. Obviously, they have a little bit of a fierce rivalry away from the pitch as well as on it at the moment. But Dan, sometimes they're slow starters in Swiss, but both of those have come out of the traps hot. It's whether they can get that fourth victory, Mark, just to push them through that Swiss stage. But thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. We are back underway now between Lucas yeah, and Milos here. And you can see the little red marker is for Ooh, Lucas. And yeah, he's man. getting a goal as well. Just Did bagging that. one right from the get-go from the restart. And it's a simple cross into Cristiano Ronaldo. It doesn't matter who you put in the way of him. He always seems to win that header. He didn't even have to jump for that one, Mark. No, he just bullied his man out of the way. The El Tornado into the cross, something we see a lot of in FIFA 19 now. And no surprise to see it being effective once more. And it's Lucas who takes the lead here. And in a game like this, especially after a little pause like that, that's huge. Not only for your confidence, but just to give you that little bit of belief that you should be here in this tournament, that you can go on a run and turn your fortunes around. When you're at zero and three, uh, you really need that little bit of momentum. You need something to give you a boost in the tournament because your head is going to be very, very low in the sand. But maybe something from the restart, no, not quite. But you've got to be very careful when you're giving the ball away in these areas. Well, here's Milos then, and there is a chance for Hullet to strike and De Gea. Has to get his left hand across his body there to turn that one behind for a corner. And Mbappe in at the front post. And De Gea can't Ooh, get a hand good. on that one. And it's simple execution of something we've seen from the very start of FIFA 19. A front post header from the corner, and now it's 1-1. One, one. Sometimes if you take those corners very quickly, that front post is so vulnerable. You saw there wasn't a player moved quick enough. The goalkeeper also wasn't moved quick enough from Lucas, so he couldn't respond. Mbappe, not someone you typically see leaping above the likes of Hullet, but it was just the fact he was in front of him. Hullet did not have a chance with that header just because Lucas wasn't able to respond and move his players quick enough. So good quick thinking from Milos. It looks like that break just injected a couple of goals into this game. Just 15 minutes gone in the first half here of this elimination game from the E-Champions League. And both players have found the back of the net, shown that they can score. And now Lucas has to answer back. R9. It's a little bit fortunate the ball ricocheting back off of the legs of Patrick Vieira. Neymar now out wide to Mbappe, having just scored at the other end. Neymar, look at the space here. Driven shot across goal. De Gea gets his body behind it. Now Milos can come away. Again, another shot that wasn't quite timed to perfection. If it had been, we might have seen it hurtling towards the back of the net. And those are the things that both of these players will want to be Ooh. focusing on. Of course, we, we can't tell the full story. We haven't seen every single one of their games. In fact, any of their games thus far. But it might be a little bit of mistakes here or there that might have them in this position. And here's Ooh. Neymar, finds the ball back to Ronaldo. And just a, a blockade of bodies kept that shot from troubling the goalkeeper here. But Milos is keeping the pressure on. Finally, after that pressure, Lucas can start to build his own attack. And I'm certainly keeping an eye on that right back position and Lala and how effective he can be, not only on the floor and creating chances, Dan, but doing the defensive work in the box as well. Maldini with a strong challenge there onto R9, but nothing given by the referee. You could argue for both of these players, their tournament was kind of set up from their round one. The fact that Lucas had to go up against Maestro in his round one today is always going to be a very difficult task. He lost that one 6-1. That is going to instantly put you on a downward slope of, I've just, I've lost by a five goal deficit. That's not going to give you any confidence whatsoever. On the other side for Milos, I mean, he was playing in an all Polish affair against Dami and he lost that one on penalties. That is going to be absolute heartbreak to get to that stage and lose on penalties. Especially against a player like Dami, who's been playing so well in recent weeks as well. Sure. Such attacking flair and all, oh, I had to deal with that. Gotcha. Interesting set <laughs> piece coming out there from Milos now. Another ball just whipped into the box and it seems like these set pieces 
Lucas really has to be switched on. Here's your Sabio. Balls will fall in back to Huli here. Sandro will deal with it. Raminos is really turning the screw here on his opponent. Mbappe gets a little bit fortunate. Neymar with a scoop turn and the strike. But the strike not good enough to beat the goalkeeper down. We saw how dangerous he was from corners earlier. And Mbappe almost replicating in a slightly different fashion. Lucas needs to be very aware of these corners. Needs to be quick to move his defenders. Otherwise, he might be punished by Milos again. And maybe this could be a game plan now for Milos. If he's seeing that there is a weakness from corners, get that ball down the byline. Get that ball close to the edge. Try and encourage the corners. Get some shots away. Hope for some deflections. Because he certainly looks very dangerous from those areas. Well, here's Neymar in the center of the park. Man. Finds Luka Modric. And we saw what effect he had on the game. Spencer and Mike were commentating over in the last round of Swiss. No, I'm sure it's fair, he was pulling yeah, the strings yeah. in the middle of the park. Great defending. And again, oh. it's Milos coming forward now. Space out wide here. Okay. The overlapping run coming in from Cancelo. Whips the ball in towards the back post. Okay. Neymar's going to get there. Back to Ronaldo. Oh, uh, hey, uh, and it's the same old result. Every time Ronaldo gets the chance, it's so rare to see him not put it away. But it was the quick thinking. Sometimes when you cross that ball to the back post, your initial thought is, well, I have to try and head this in because we know how effective it is. Instead, he's just heading that back towards Cristiano Ronaldo, really recognizing the state of play, recognizing where the defenders were and where his attacking players were as well. And because of that, he's now been given that one goal lead and potentially the momentum he needs in this tournament to really turn it upside down, to be honest. So then, two yeah. goals in succession then? here. Sure. But Lucas with a chance here, has to find yeah, that pass, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. Sergio no, Ramos. What an important tackle that could be. A real chance there to potentially find that? the equaliser. Tornado on the edge of the box. Ronaldo's there at the back post. But the timing's off on the header. And for all the goals that we do see conceded at that back post, in that battle between Marcelo and Ronaldo, you still have to hit it green a lot of the time to beat that man. And this is what can separate you from being just a good player who's able to qualify for these tournaments but not getting out of Swiss and being a player who's 3-0 instead of 0-3 is, is making sure you do time them green, making sure you do finish those. Because, yes, okay, the back post header is very often, is very common, but it's not often you're presented with clear-cut opportunities where if you do time it green, you're almost guaranteed that goal. That? Cool. Well, Lucas towards the end of this half is really starting to grow back into the game and Vieira had to come back there and show his worth defensively. That should be the end of the half here. De Gea will send it forward as we tick into that third minute of added on time. Maybe time for one more attack if he can keep the ball going forward here, but no. The referee's whistle will go. And at the break, it's 2-1 down. And you have to say, it has been a deserved 2-1 lead as well. I'd say so. I, I feel like maybe Lucas caught Milos a little bit off guard after we got back into thing after a short pause. And then Milos, he focused up, managed to find that goal instantly from the corner as well with very quick thinking. And I imagine both of them will now look at formations as well and, and seeing how they could develop, how they can change them in this game. The first 45 minutes, very important in the first leg. It's where you really learn how your opponent plays. Because it doesn't matter how many players you played at this tournament, every player has their own play style. No player is going to play the same. They might play similarly, but there's always going to be minute decisions. It's examination, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're, they're going to be slightly different. And sometimes you have to dissect their gameplay, and you might say, all right, well, they're really focusing on the right-hand side here, but I don't feel like my left back is coping with it well. So then you might see those changes where Pullet comes in, for example. Well, I think it's a fascinating thing to watch through the tournament, and that's why we see the best players in the world usually be able to pull off the bigger result in the second leg, but we're back underway here. There's Milos in the white here, who takes the one goal advantage into this second half of the first leg. Long way to go, of course, in this game. And it is Milos as well who's taken the initiative to make some changes, bringing on Messi instead of Neymar. Again, maybe he's noticed something from Lucas's play and feels like having Messi in a CAM position might be able to work out for him. And you could see he was trying to play that through ball. Maybe he's noticed that Messi might be able to just break through defense where Neymar possibly wasn't doing so well. Vieira finds the ball back to Lionel Messi, the Champions League pedigree of Lionel Messi. We know about it. 
were talking about it earlier. Manchester United fans know about it as well, as well as many European clubs oh. who have gone up against the Argentine. Here's Milos there. Ball into the box. Ronaldo with a shot. A little snapshot inside the box to Haya. Sprung across and comfortably plucked it out of the air. Milos looking very dangerous going forward and the introduction of Messi has generated a little bit of extra oomph to his attack but has to be careful here. A couple of accelerated fake shots makes the room for the El Tornado cross and this time it was green. The referee's going to bring this one back for a free kick. Another chance for Lucas to whip it into the box. Header was one but it was straight down the throat of De Gea. A lot of players in that situation from a free kick, you'd maybe see them control one of the players, try and bring them to the front post, but Lucas spotted it earlier. He spotted that Modric was in a, a pretty advantageous position, but unfortunately, the header wasn't enough. You don't see Modric scoring too many headers, but you never know. We saw Messi score an incredible one earlier today. A little update score-wise. We'll just let this bit of play run out, though, because it's 3-1 now to Milos. Milos Jarega. And just like that, a simple pass in play. Look at the space here again inside the box for Ronaldo. 3-1 now, but a result for you, Dan. Not a result, excuse me. A score, a live score coming in right now. As Texas currently 4-1 down to fiddle. And the American really showing up here in Manchester. And it shows you what a couple of big wins under your belt can do. You don't fear anyone. I had a lot of nursery rhyme jokes up my sleeve, but I feel like I'm going to save them because it looks like Fiddle is going to be on his way, potentially out of Swiss, or through Swiss, should I stay, say, because he's performing exemplary well. Really showing what he's made of, and it would be a fantastic result if he is able to take down Tex. But of course, it wouldn't be all be all and end all for Tex. Still plenty of opportunities for him to get himself through the Swiss stage as well. Messi stood over the free kick here, just lets that one run. Laid off here to Mbappe. Quick passing inside the box, a beautiful back heel from Eusebio. Last ditch defended again, means it will go behind for a corner. But again, he was showing. He's got some set pieces up his sleeve here, Dan. Unfortunately, that one going offside, but you could see what he was trying to do. Hoping for a, a dink out to the edge and then dink it to the back post from that position. But unfortunately, the players run a little bit too far. But I think Milos really should be pressing on looking for more goals we're only in the first leg and he has more goals in the tank that's for sure the way he's been pushing forward the way that he's been applying pressure in that final third he could be three four up by the end of this first leg if he keeps going the same way about things lucas finds the ball into cristiano ronaldo might be a chance here r9 cruyff turn strikes but again the finish is just lacking not seeing as many greens as we'd expect. Or should I say, maybe we're seeing as many missed time shots as we expect, should expect. With the pressure that he's right, currently on this no game. Bracket. I think that's worth pointing out. I mean, we see so many players timing at green very successfully because we watch the cream of the crop so often. However, when it is a high pressure situation, it's not an easy thing to do. And neither is moving the goalkeeper. But oh dear, Hullet's brought him down. The goalkeeper movement was fantastic. Not sure he was even controlling Hullet at that point. But the Croquettas had sold him. Chance to get back yeah, into I'm this game then. For Lucas, 3-1 down at the moment. And it's Lala. He takes the penalties on the real pitch. And he's going to oh, miss this one though. Just. Big save. I think justice may be done there. Well, we were asking ourselves what were going to be the implications of having Lala on the pitch as an offensive option or maybe wanting a little bit more defensive prowess on that right hand side but now missing that penalty that is not going to be what Lucas put him in the team for that's for sure that was a big chance this game Ronaldo though he's through on goal finds R9 interesting touch and the ball's going to fall back to him it's scrappy inside the box and Cancelo just has to clear his lines there 15 minutes or so left in this game and you feel like Lucas has changed something here, a little formation change. And he has created chances since that little switch off the pitch has affected what's happening on it. Modric now around the corner to Ronaldo. Neymar. 
Back to Cristiano Ronaldo, twisting and turning. Vieira stuck to his man well, though, and just clears his lines once more. And I was encouraging Milos to be pressing forward to look for that fourth goal, and I think he was right to, but now, as we get into the final ten, I'd expect him to hold a little bit more possession because he has given the ball away a, a couple of times, which has offered some opportunities for Lucas that maybe wouldn't have been presented if Milos had been a little bit more sensible with his passing. So this is why we're seeing him now recycle the ball a little bit more, switch the plate, go from left back to right back if they are available, and just not give even Lucas a sniff of getting into a one-goal deficit instead of the two-goal cushion that we currently see. Mbappe now is going up against Maldini, who's tried to come across to deal with the French. Oh, yeah, the but the same thing is that the French is not going to be able to do that. Just eking the seconds off the clock. You can see no rush passes here, always waiting to bait a player out. But if you get that slightly wrong, you can allow that tackle to come in. And now there's lots of space on this right-hand side for Mbappe to attack. The Frenchman showing his pace now, Marcelo. Trying desperately to keep up. Lucas looking for a way back into this game. Neymar round the corner to Ronaldo. And that one was green. There just wasn't enough of behind it to beat the keeper. Yeah, not much power into it. And there was a potential free kick there, but the referee allowed played on. And because he shot, he didn't get given the free kick. And it was a dangerous area. Something that maybe if he had thought quick on his feet, he might have just stopped with the ball and said, look, I'm going to take this free kick because I think it's a good opportunity. Went through the shop instead, and now he could be punished here. And here is an opportunity for Ronaldo. Stops up. Look at the man inside. It's Lionel Messi. And Lala maybe atones for his mistake at the other end with a sliding challenge to make sure that this game stays within grasping distance here for Lucas. Maybe one more chance here. We are at the very final seconds of this game. Neymar will beat his man to it. Hullet's inside the box and Hullet makes it count. Lala saved the day at the other end. And then Hullet's gone straight out the other end and made this a one goal game as we head towards the second leg. You've got to respect just having a crack from there with Hullet. You saw there was a player waiting in the middle of the box and you thought, I would be thinking, I'm just going to dink that across. It's going to be a simple headed goal. But instead, no, just timing it green. We talked about the pressure, but he was able to say, look, I'm presented with such a good opportunity here. I have to hit this. I have to time it green. He's put it away, and now he's made it just a one-goal game going into this second leg. You have to imagine that the referee's going to blow his whistle because we were deep into the fourth minute there with only three minutes added on time. It's just going to be pumped forward here, expecting the full-time whistle, and there it is. So, how quickly a goal can change things. And the feel of a match, the complexion of a match heading towards the second leg. Now just the one goal between the two players, Dan. And it was a game of few chances. And you have to say that Lucas maybe had the better of the start of this, this game. And, you know, he got out to a fantastic lead. But sometimes it's a steal in these kind of situations where your back's against the wall. It's not how well you play. It's staying in the game in the first leg. And you did see in that second half... You know, the ability of Milos to, to come back into the game, um, sorry, excuse me, Lucas to come back into the game, uh, having been on the back foot the, for the majority of it. And it's whether Milos is going to be looking at the chances he had. When he was 3-1 up, he did have several opportunities where he could have made it four, could have made it five. And we keep saying it, you have to take those opportunities. You need to be timing it green when you're presented with those. A little bit about that one, but uh, looks like we're about to get into our second leg in this game. 3-2 the score, so just the one goal between the two players. Then how do you feel this one's going to go? Because it was a tight affair. I feel like Milos wants some corners, and then I think he might be able to get a couple of goals, but Lucas will have the momentum behind him now. He'll be feeling confident going into this one, so... I think it's going to be a very tight affair. I think it's going to be both players with a couple of nervy passes. And I'm expecting a lot of mistakes, which sounds strange, but because there's so much on the line here, you are potentially, well, you will be eliminated from the competition if you lose this game. I'm expecting mistakes. And of course, it being a must-win game as well, Dan, you're going to see those tactical changes coming in. Someone will be chasing the game at one point in this second leg here. So someone will have to make the change. Someone will have to roll the dice, and then it just becomes an end-to-end -end game. Lots of chances will present themselves for both players, but the first chance of the game here could fall to Neymar. Tries to introduce Rude Hullet. But Neymar now will come away once more. Well, actually gets the ball back here, and Hullet's going to come forward. Neymar's making a run from deep. It's all about the final pass, and R9 couldn't make it initially. That ball in behind isn't going to reach its target as well. Two opportunities to break behind the defences there, neither taken. 
think both players should really focus on trying to control the game with possession here in this second leg. Try and starve their opponents a little bit. Try and frustrate them because then that's when more mistakes will happen. If you can frustrate your opponent to the point where they are trying to rush passes, they're trying to get that ball up the pitch quite fast, suddenly they're going to be making mistakes. They're going to be playing that ball into situations that they're not expecting to. They're going to be putting it in areas where they shouldn't be putting them. And then you can take advantage of those. You can really try and optimize your attack from their mistakes. Well, the first goal is going to be a very interesting one in this game as well. Of course, if it falls to Milos at 4-2 up, you sort of think the game could be over if he plays it to a tee. And if that does happen, obviously it forces changes as well on the other side of things. However, the next goal obviously tying things up and then it becomes a more attritional affair between the two players. As Ronaldo now manages to come away. Look at the space here for Neymar. They've got a 3v3 situation. Vieira does well, though, to get back and make that tackle. And sometimes those are where... Those are the situations where it really separates the men from the <laughs> women. You see that player coming towards you when you notice that you are going to be dragged back. It's just, are you going to use that one skill move, that simple ball roll to get away from that player? And then suddenly, you've got so much space to pass around. If you try and run with it too much, you get punished for it. Because the likes of Vieira, the likes of Hullet, they are going to have that reach. They are going to be able to pull you back as well. Here's Neymar then, looking for the run of Mbappe, and Mbappe will beat Ramos to the ball here. Little flick over his head, ball is in the air, whips it in towards that front post to Haya. Comes out and claims in the middle of two red and black shirts. And now Vieira is releasing Mbappe straight up the other end. Milos coming forward here. Ball across to Neymar, gets a second by the cherry. That is slightly fortuitous, but we do have our first goal in this second leg. Yes, there was a little bit of fortune to it, but you've also got to recognize the fact that he reacted well to that situation. He saw the ball was presented to him again. He had that choice. Am I just going to shoot instantly with this? Am I going to pass it across? A lot of players do just kind of hammer that shoot button sometimes, but you've got to be very careful to do so, because if you do hammer the shoot button, you're going to time it red and the ball could go anywhere. Uh, but deflection is going to help him out in this scenario. And now he's going to get another two goal cushion. And Lucas is going to have to really look at his tactics and change yeah. things up. Uh, this is where the changes have to come in because this is where times becomes a factor as well. You can see when he changes into the 4-4-2. Trying to get those wide players up top, those two men up top as well to work with each other, look for those quick one-twos to get in behind. Maybe those runs off the ball just occupying those centre-backs for the likes of Modric and Hullet to step forward from midfield. Personally, the 4-4-2 is my favorite attacking option because both the right midfielder, the left midfielder, and the two strikers all attack together as one unit, which is slightly different to the 4-2-3-1, um, mainly because the central attacking midfielder often comes back and defends. So he's not always there when you, you lump that ball forward and you'll only have three players attacking rather than the four. And you're completely right, and the two strikers really helps to pass it around those two central defenders. So lots of work to do here for Lucas. Well, it steps in. For Marla, so now he can come forward again. And Mbappe's going to have his pocket pick there. Momentarily by Alexandro. I imagine we might see more of Alexandro. ومساعد بيلعب دلوقتي هو لعب اول ثلاث مباريات وكسبهم ودلوقتي بيلعب الرابع بس هم عارضين ده بدل ماتش مساعدهم one of the players who can hold him off with the strength attributes he has as a foot item. Manages to hold off the Portuguese legend trying to run through a goal. And Alvin Milos, he does have plenty of time left in this, uh, in this second leg. So I wouldn't be encouraging him to be playing it around the defense too much uh, because that will naturally allow Lucas to pressure him more and then he's more likely to make some mistakes. But at the same time, he can be smart about his FIFA. He can keep that ball a little bit more. He can play slightly more of a possession game here with a two-goal lead. Of course, Lucas is having to commit more men forward here, and that is creating some space in behind. Just rushing that final ball ever so slightly, though. 
اما هاجا اتكلم هقرب انا تمام ديني كان وين ذا تاكل و مبابي ذيس از سمارت ستاف هير فروم مايلوس اي ثينك اتس فيري جود فور هيم تو وين لوكاس از اتاكينج تو ريلي بي بريبيرد تو انستلي هيت هيم اون ذا كاونتر اتاك بيكوز اوف ذات سبيس هيز ليفينج ان ذا باك هيز يور سافيو لوكينج تو فايند مبابي ساندرو هاز تو وين ذا هيدر سكند فيز ذا اتاك از ذا بول فيل تو هولي انيشلي نيمار انتو يور سافيو رونالدو And that could be the game. And you saw the reaction of Lucas as well. His head kind of fell into his hands just as that one hit the back of the net because you know three goals is a long, long way to come back from. And we've all been talking about the glory of getting to that final layer, of getting to Wallahi go to Mosul the Champions League and the prestige of this tournament. Yeah. And we have to look at the opposite side of that. The disappointment of being eliminated at zero and four is potentially what Lucas is looking at here. Even though he, of course, will be down in the history books as one of the 64 competitors at the first ever E Champions League, he will also be remembered as one of the first to be eliminated. No, 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 He is then recycling the play. So I really like how he's approaching this second leg. Yes, mature FIFA. As I said, he gives the ball away, but it won't matter too much as the halftime whistle goes here in our second leg. But I mean, Manas has pretty much got this one sewn up, bar him throwing it away at this point. It's going to have to take something pretty special coming in from Lucas to turn this one around. But we have seen three goals deficits overturned. Look at the Tuga Joksan game we were watching earlier. It can be done. But that is Tuga and Joksan, who in my opinion i would be putting two grand jocks in the top eight players to be getting through this tournament um it's slightly different because they've been in so many situations before they're veterans of the scene however for both of these players here this is a chance for them to kind of make a name for themselves they haven't had the best of seasons uh, but now here at the e-champions league they could do something and this is the first step to trying to get back onto that that train that needs to start chugging because it hasn't chugged much so far So the question here for Lucas is, can you find a goal early in this second half to give yourself a chance to get back into the game? First chance fell to him, but again, no green time finishing there. That could have been a little bit different there. A lot of the time we see those green finishes beat the goal. So you know what I asked him to do for that one. Well, with this game pretty much wrapped up. Well, I say it was pretty much wrapped up. Lucas maybe. Might be able to bring something back in here. I was going to say, I'm not sure. 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 I'm staying with now because suddenly the story isn't as simple. A two goal deficit is perfectly doable in this amount of time, Mark. How a goal can change a game. We say it a lot, but it's so, so true. And now the questions that start going through. He lost his head. One more, don't throw this away. Don't choke this lead. I'm so close to getting that win on the board. Keeping my tournament life alive at the E Champions League. And now Lucas is going to be coming forward. Full of gusto, but a goal here. Really would take the wind out of his sails. Ramos has to get back again to deal with Ronaldo. And you're going to see a lot of those 1v1 situations now as both players are going to find space in behind. Lucas coming forward again. The change to the 4-1-2-1-2 means you can see more players attacking through the center of the pitch, but out wide you are going to see more space. Maybe Lionel Messi is the man to get in behind here and exploit some of those gaps being left. It's also offering him the chance to play a lot more ping-pong passes. You can see he's really playing a very quick game now. Trying to get that ball up the pitch as quick as possible, but that can also be a downside if you pass it into your opponent's midfield. Maybe he has recognized at this point that Milos is pressuring and he has to play a lot of first touch football to be able to combat that. Approaching the hour mark then in their second leg. Two goals, the difference between these two. And I kind of feel like the nerves have gone now. Both players are just playing their best FIFA. Realizing what's on the line, realizing this could be it for them as their each Champions League. Life is on the line, Mbappe. You can also see higher pressure up the pitch here. And I think that Lucas has recognized that Milos is trying to slow this game down. Yeah, that means you need to use your R1 button to try and encourage your secondary player to get involved as well, really generate as much pressure. 
use the D-pad to change everything as well. Everyone to pressurise. Get constant pressure on as well. Yes, you're going to leave yourself vulnerable at the back, but at this point, who cares? You have to press on. You have to look for that goal. Otherwise, your tournament's over. And even though it is an absolute honour to be playing at this tournament, you still want to be playing when Saturday comes around. See, the pause has been queued for quite a long time here for Lucas as well. He knows he needs to make tactics. <laughs> and Milos knows that one more goal here would pretty much seal the deal. Ronaldo towards the back post. What important. Couple of fingers on the ball. That might be from David De Gea. As that was falling straight onto the head of one of the unrushing attackers. Modric now. Into Neymar. Space here for Mbappe. Takes it out wide. I would have liked to maybe look for a strike, but instead he goes inside. Ball falls to our nine. Game on. One goal the difference. Lucas's E Champions League life is not over yet. Still managing to cling on, still managing to pressure at the right times. The formation changes worked wonders for him. His game looks completely different. The little one touch passing has been a real struggle on the other side for his opponent. And now, with just one goal to get back into it, suddenly, my loss is going from, oh, I was, I'm three goals up, I'm cruising, I'm in, I, I get to still be in the Champions League, to suddenly, oh, what happens if I throw this away? What happens if maybe I'm the one who's going to be going out at zero and four? And that's a scary proposition. You do not want those thoughts creeping into your mind, but believe you me, once they're there, there's no getting rid of them. The only way to make them dissipate once more is to find a goal of your own. Restore that two-goal lead. It's even harder, if I'm honest, Mark, when it's a goal of that nature as well. Very little that he could have done very differently. Defended well. Notice that the El Tornado cross is coming out. He brought a player towards him. Managed to win the header. Unfortunately, the ball just fell perfectly for Lucas to give him now the opportunity to get a comeback of dreams. I keep saying that there's something about this tournament, about the E-Champions League, which is bringing out the best of players. What can he find? Here's Milos then, looking to put out the flames that might be starting to ignite. Under Lucas, 2-2 in this game. 5-4 in aggregate. And Lucas will get the ball back here. And he has the chance to flow forward once more. 15 <inaudible> minutes left in this game. Is there another twist in the tail? There's been <inaudible> so much <inaudible> twist at this point. It's basically forming a tornado, but maybe we need an L tornado to grab a goal. Here's the Sabio, and oh, it's found a goal! It's 5-5 now! I said it wasn't game over! And believe you me, this game is still on. Absolute heartbreak for Milos. A man who probably thought he was clean sailing now into the next round of Swiss. Suddenly has to go back to the drawing board and try and have a way to combat this 4-1-2-1-2 that has just shown so much promise for Lucas. He's dominated the central of the park. And he's been able to create so many opportunities because of it as well. Is Lucas going to be able to make some history for himself here? I mean, Allah Spencer keeps talking here. about the e Istanbul and the comebacks. Well, it's it one seems of the closest to be we've had to it. comeback after comeback at this point. This is what the Champions League does. This is what the E Champions League is providing. Memorable moments. There might be another one here in this elimination game. 5-5 five, five now on aggregate. Lucas was three goals down. Around 20 in game minutes ago. And now, Milos has got it all to do. Cancelo comes forward for him. And you have to say, Dan, the momentum fully now. With Lucas, but no, Messi! The Champions League legend himself is stepping up in the Champions League! And that's resilience! And sometimes a picture tells a thousand words. The amount of hard work from Lucas to get back into this game. Just to, the cloth to be pulled underneath right at the depth. So tough for him now.
to try and dig deep again because when you put that much into it and then you fall again after tying it up, that really does take it out of you. And you have to give huge, huge credit here to Milos. The way that he's held on mentally, not just in the game. Having thrown away a three goal lead to then have that opportunity present itself. And not only that, Dan, getting into that position and having your head about you still after conceding those three goals to execute what you've done a thousand times before. It's a lot more difficult than it sounds, especially on a stage like this, especially in the first E Champions League. Absolutely, Mark. I mean, I'm sure everyone watching, every player watching, can sympathize with the fact that how easy it is to crumble when you concede three goals that quickly and you think you're through to the next round. But then we can focus on the fact that Milos has been able to keep his head above water here. But now he needs to play this smart. He needs to play the ball around the pitch. He has to frustrate Lucas. He has to keep the ball away from Lucas. He can't risk another attack for Lucas, if I'm honest, because Lucas has looked so dangerous every time he's gone forward. And he's won the ball back here. There are another goal in this one. The back inside been here to Pele. Important tackle there, and look at all of the red and black shirts just hunting down this football at the moment. Trying to win possession back, but it is going to leave space in behind it. 88 minutes on the clock. Ronaldo maybe just looking to bait a tackle here. And this is the smart play. Yeah. Taking it all the way back here. Keep that ball and keep your tournament hopes alive. Very intelligent. I was worried he was going to run into the box and look for that final goal to kill this game off. But this seems like a far more sensible plan, providing he can keep that ball, but does need to be so careful. Just one minute, and Milos will be staying in the competition, and Lucas will be out. But that header might provide something. Maybe not. And there it is. There was a little bit of a nervy moment. But we do have our final result here, and it's Milos who manages to find the goal to close out what was an entertaining game. A very entertaining one, and uh, almost dream come true.